everyone. Just like the title says, this is going to be my review of the Oppo Digital HA2 Portable Headphone Amplifier and DAC. Now I firstly want to mention that I was actually a beta tester for the HA2 unit, so I firstly want to thank Oppo Digital for letting me have the opportunity to be a beta tester and be able to provide feedback on how this device ultimately turns out. It was a lot of fun being able to interact with other beta testers and staff at Oppo Digital, so it was a really unique experience for me to be able to participate in that. So as a beta tester, we got to provide uh, various aspects of feedback on the HA2. So I won't really go into de details, but one of the things that we provided feedback on was actually how the volume knob feels. Um, it's not too tight so that you can't turn it. Um, similar to what I experienced with the FIO E12. It's a little bit too stiff for me, but at the same time, it's not too loose so that you accidentally adjust it in your pocket and magically increase the volume somehow when you are walking around and this is in your pocket. So it's, an, it's a nice feeling volume knob and we got to provide uh, feedback on how that feels for this end product. Another aspect we got to provide feedback on was actually the sound quality. So I will jump right into the sound quality. So um, the HA2 can be used both as an amplifier or as a DAC and amp. So I will talk about the DAC and amp first um, because a lot of people will be using the internal DAC on the HA2 with their smartphone or just as a USB sound card. So similar to the Geek Out, the HA2 actually uses the same DAC chip. So it's the ESS Sabre 9018K2M DAC chip. And what's different about the HA2 versus the Geek Out is that the HA2 actually allows you to play DSD-256 music. Uh, the DAC chip is able to decode that, but Light Harmonic uh, kind of disables that on the Geek Out. And I think one reason for that is because in Mac OS, you can't actually really play DSD-256 yet. It's not officially supported. Um, so OPPO actually allows that, and you have to use Windows because of that. So if you want to play DSD-256 music, you have to use Windows. And I've been using FooBar right now uh, with the ASIO drivers just set up to stream DSD music directly to the HA2. So that's one aspect of the DAC. Um, another aspect of the DAC is that, uh, I guess in typical fashion, um, when people usually hear an ESS Sabre DAC, they mention what they call a saber glare and I think the HA2 still has that saber glare. I mentioned in my Geek Out review that it, the Geek Out actually doesn't really have that glare which is nice um, but the HA2 kind of does have that and it's a little bit of a unfortunate thing but most people might mind it, some might not mind it. I personally don't mind it too much. Uh, so if you haven't heard a saber DAC before what they call the saber glare is basically kind of a harsh sound that you hear uh, between the upper mid-range and the lower treble area. So when you're listening to a snare drum hit, it might sound a little bit sharp. But that's limited to the DAC only. So if you're using the HA2 as an amplifier, uh, you don't get that effect, which is nice. Um, so inside the HA2 is a Class AB amplifier. Um, if you know about the Light Harmonic Geek Out, that's actually a Class A amplifier. And having Class AB amplifier is nice because it provides nice sound quality compared to class B amplifier, um, more similar to class A, uh, but it's also not nearly as energy inefficient as a class A amplifier. So you won't get a whole lot of heat dissipation because of that. And considering that the HA2 is supposed to be paired with your smartphone, which might be in your pocket, it's a nice uh, design choice to show that you can have nice sound quality still, but having a much more energy efficient uh, amplifier design in the class AB design. So in terms of the amplifier, I think the HA2 is a pretty good amplifier. Uh, it has a nice ability to make the sound stage a little bit bigger. Um, so when I'm using the HA2 with my iPhone 4S, which I'm actually using to record the video, uh, I just use a line out dock, 30 pin to line out dock. And that actually improves the soundstage quite a bit when just using the HA2 as an amplifier with my iPhone. Uh, another aspect of the amplifier section is that, um, actually, I should mention first in the DAC section, the ESS9018K2M DAC chip can actually use 
digital volume attenuation, uh, and digital signal processing to adjust the volume in the digital domain. So even if you use a smartphone device, uh, you might see that you can still adjust the volume on the smartphone. Now that doesn't actually mean you're losing bit resolution like you would on a computer per se. Uh, the ESS9018 K2M DAC chip is very smart and paired with the OPPO HA2, the HA2 actually tells the smartphone or host device such as your computer that it can use the DAC chip to adjust the volume digitally and the device that it's been connected to will actually stream a bit perfect signal to the HA2. The HA2's DAC chip will do the internal uh, digital signal processing to adjust the, the digital volume there. So you're still getting a bit perfect signal into the HA2. You're not losing any sound quality there. The DAC chip is doing all the internal digital signal processing you need to do. So you can adjust the digital volume, but you're not losing a lot of quality because of how it's implemented. Now back into the amplifier section, uh, the volume knob here is actually in the analog domain. So when you're using the amplifier section, you are adjusting the volume in the analog domain with this potentiometer. So it allows a very nice uh, control of the volume. But anyway, uh, in terms of using the HA2 as an amplifier, I think it drives pretty much most headphones out there. Uh, it outputs around 12 milliwatts of power at 600 ohms. Uh, so that's enough for me for my uh, AKG K240 monitor headphones, which are 600 ohm. Um, for most people, maybe it might not be enough because I know a lot of people listen to music pretty loud and at 12 milliwatts of power, that's not a whole lot of power to drive an inefficient headphone like the K240M, but I personally listen to music at a low volume level, so it's okay for me. Uh, for most everyday headphones, uh, I think the HA2 does plenty of job at driving headphones. It has plenty of power for in-ear monitors as well as uh, your portable headphones such as the Oppo PM3, which I'm also a beta tester of, and I will upload a review video of that later. Um, but it's nice to be able to have the gain switch um, as well as the digital volume control and analog control. So it allows a lot of flexibility in terms of how uh, you control your volume with your music depending on whatever headphone or in-ear earphone you're using. So it's a nice uh, device for volume control. Okay, so now that I've covered the sound quality, um, I guess I'll just talk about the, the device as a whole. Um, so, when comparing the HA2 to the Light Harmonic Geek Out, uh, I mentioned that you hear a lot of similarities between the two, and I find that if you have one or the other, you're not really missing out too much on the sound quality, uh, but if you want to make a more concrete decision about which one you might want to purchase, um, in terms of sound quality, I like both. Um, it's hard to make a decision for me if I wanted to pick one or the other. I find that the HA2 sounds slightly warmer to the Geek Out. Um, the Geek Out has a slightly smoother treble on the other hand compared to the HA2 because the HA2 again as I mentioned has that kind of saber glare. Um, so it's really a choice between your personal preferences. I don't really mind either sound signature. Uh, so it's really up to you. In terms of the sound stage, I've heard um, a lot of amplifiers and I tend to find that the sound stage is either very wide and very tall, similar to the uh, Objective 2 or the Objective DAC and Objective 2 combo, or you have other uh, sound stages with DACs and amps where it's more of a three-dimensional sound stage with okay width, okay height, and okay depth. And I find that the HA2, similar to the Geek Out, has that okay width, okay height, okay depth sound stage which is actually pretty nice for imaging. So um, of course, since I'm recording with binaural microphones, I often know exactly where the sound source is coming from. So having that more three-dimensional sound stage makes the imaging a lot better. And the HA2 does a great job at that, similar to the Light Harmonic Geek Out. So I think the sound stage and imaging of uh, the HA2 is really great. Um, now in terms of battery life because I've been talking about how they sound as a DAC and amp and just only as an amp. 
Uh, battery life is important to take note. So on OPPO Digital's website, you can find specifications for the battery life or rough estimates of the battery. And those numbers were actually provided by me when I was doing the beta testing. So just as an amplifier, um, I was connecting my iPhone 4S with the 30 pin line out dock directly into the HA2. Um, I turned it on high gain and kind of medium uh, volume level. And that would kind of represent a typical situation for a portable uh, setup if you're listening in a loud, noisy environment. And I was driving a V-Mode Crossfade M100. So in terms of the battery life with that setup, I got around 14 hours of battery life. Um, now when using it as a DAC and amp, I was using the 30 pin to USB connector directly into the HA2. I was playing back some 24 uh, 48 music um, and the stock music app and again driving the V Motocross Fade M100 at high gain uh, medium volume settings I got around seven and a half hours of battery life out of that which is a nice number it's not very high uh, I'd say it's slightly above average compared to the competition uh, 14 hours of battery life again is slightly above average on the competition so the HA2 does get a great battery life uh, inside the HA2 there's a 3000 milliamp hour battery which is about typical of a smartphone these days so you are getting quite a bit of battery out of it. Another thing speaking of battery is that you can use the HA2 as a mobile power bank so if you want to charge your smartphone or other mobile device you can actually do that with the HA2. So there's the battery button here and if you press and hold that and wait about five seconds you'll get a blue light and that blue light will indicate that the HA2 is being used as a mobile power bank. So one caveat for that is that the HA2 only charges mobile devices out of the USB-A port. So if you have an iDevice, uh, such as an iPhone, you can actually use the HA2 both as a DAC and AMP, as well as use it to charge your smartphone all at the same time. On the other hand, if you have an Android device, uh, you have to use the micro USB port there which is mode A and in that oh I'm sorry mode B uh, the charging is in mode A so if you're in mode B and using the micro USB port with your Android device you actually cannot use the HA2 both as a mobile power bank and as a DAC amp at the same time because you're using one port or the other so that's kind of a bummer but if you have an iDevice uh, this is a really great utility for your on-the-go travels, I guess. Uh, you can also, again, use the HA2 as a USB sound card, which is nice to have. So you just plug it into the micro USB port and you can use it as a both DAC and AMP or just as a DAC. So you, it has a line out option here. So if you want to connect this to an external amplifier uh, or other device, that's really nice to have handy. I've been using the HA2 with my stack setup and it sounds really great. Um, one thing in the line out mode, you can't actually use the uh, gain or the bass boost with that. So that's kind of a bummer if you wanna use those um, in line out mode, which you can't. Okay, and ooh, one other big feature that the HA2 has that I don't think any other portable headphone DAC has uh, is that uh, it actually, I guess, it's not really the same thing, but it kind of has a built-in Apple camera connection kit. And what this is really important for is that if you're using an iOS device uh, running iOS 7 and above, uh, so my iPhone 4S can actually do this, um, the iOS uh, software actually disables music playback above 24, 48 kilohertz. So if you want to play high resolution music natively, you actually have to use this Apple camera connection kit. There's a lightning variant as well. Um, and that will allow you to use an external DAC that can natively stream higher resolution music files. However, if you want to go above 2496, the Apple camera connection kit cannot actually do that to my knowledge. So the HA2, solves all of those problems and it kind of has a built-in Apple camera connection kit with it. So even if you don't have a Apple camera connection kit, you don't need one to use it with the HA2. 
you just plug in your USB-A connector, plug this into your lightning connector device, or you can have a USB-A connector to a 30 pin dock. The HA2 will play back all music files natively uh, with the exception that you need to use an external uh, application for it. So the application that I've been using with the HA2 on my iPhone is uh, what's called the Onkyo HF player. And I'll put a link in the description for that, but that basically allows you to play music files up to DSD-256 if you have an iPhone 4S, or 5S rather. So it's a really nice application to have to pair with the HA2. There's one on Android as well, so if you want the high resolution music playback, the Onkyo HF player is available on Android as well, which is nice. So that's a really cool feature of the HA2 that I have not seen in any other portable DAC and amp out there. So kudos to Oppo for building that into the HA2. Um, actually, when beta testing, the first beta units didn't even have that feature. Uh, and it's the same size and same shape, same form factor, and about the same weight. So I was really impressed to see Oppo be able to be able to put that into the device so quickly uh, without haste. So that's really cool. Um, another feature that the HA2 has that I haven't seen in any other portable DAC and amp is that it has VOOC charging capability. So if you want to charge your HA2, um, you can use a regular micro USB to USB-A connector to your computer. And that will take about two hours to charge your device from 0% to 100%. But Oppo actually decided to put this into the package. And so you can have this VOOC connection, which you can tell is VOOC because it has a green USB connector. And the cable itself also has a green USB connector, so you know that it's the special VOOC uh, charging cable. And this will allow you to charge your HA2 from 0% to 75% in about 30 minutes. In my test, it was about 35 minutes, but that's close enough. Uh, so that's really cool to be able to charge your HA2 in just 30 minutes. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to in terms of uh, features, the volume, the sound, um, oh, price. So this is priced at $299 MSRP, and I think that is a very good bargain for what you pay for. You get a really nice package overall. This is a real leather uh, case, or not case, but uh, sleeve, I guess, material. Uh, so it's a very nice looking unit. It's uh, it also comes with a lot of stuff in the package. You get your micro USB on the go cable. You get your uh, lightning connector cable. You get a line out dock, or not uh, not a line out dock. You get a, a mini jack interconnect. You get two silicone bands. You get your VOOC connectors. And yeah, you just get a really great package out of this. Uh, if I were to rate this in terms of just the price alone, I would say this is a, a, a bargain. Go ahead and buy this. If you need a portable DAC and amp, I think this is probably a really good uh, device out there. Probably one of the best that I've personally seen. Um, in terms of all the features it has, all of the package contents it has, the overall appearance and build quality and aesthetics of it, it's all a really great package in my opinion. And I. I know you guys might think that I'm kind of biased because I was a beta tester, but honestly, I really do think this is a great product. Um, I love the Light Harmonic Geek Out in terms of its sound quality, just when using it as a USB sound card. And the HA2 sounds so similar to it, and I can use it with many mobile devices, and I can use it out and about, put it in my pocket, and not have to worry about the heat dissipation burning a hole in my pocket. I think the HA2 is a really great product. So. If you're in the market for a portable DAC and amp, I think the HA2 is probably a good choice for the price that you pay for. So thank you for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys soon. Morning light, western town. Roadside cross